exposing world, which will be absolute stops at the core of where action will take you place. And it's not only your choice. I think it shouldn't be only your choice. Because you represent something. You have an addict bag. You have this network. You have this cooperation between all these antennas. It has a value in terms of human resources, in terms of training, in terms of learning, the different culture, and so on. And society needs it. Whether it is on the Euroland side, because there is this big democratic issues coming in the, in the next years, and many citizens expect the young people to be part of the forces trying to find solutions about the democratization of Euroland and so on. But also, outside of Euroland, outside of the EU, your generation in many countries is seen as a, a generation for hope. Hope for having new elites. Hope for having, yeah, no. Hope for having new elites, less corrupted, <coughs> more efficient, more open to the rest of the world, more democratic. And the question is how can you manage to get the most efficient way to serve these expectations on each side? But of course, you can say you don't care. And you can say we keep on doing like we've been doing. Knowing that it was not always the case. I said I will not speak much about the past, but when EG was created, the objective was clear. It was to have, of course, cultural exchange between Europeans. It was foremost to build, to shape, to train future active European citizens in the objective of, of a political entity called the European Community and then the European Union. <coughs> so then you can act as a citizen. And of course, cultural exchange is with the larger dimension of Europe. That was the original plans. By the way, that was the time when in conferences like with Agora and so on, we had head of states prime ministers, commissioners, and so on, coming to talk to us, to talk with us. Because we were relevant to them. We do exist in our agenda. We are providing them something of huge value. We are providing the support of the young generation, the students, to their agendas of European integration, of European democratization, whatever, and so on. And they were, of course, giving back to us in terms of subvention, in terms of visibility, and so on. So you have to ask yourself, what do you bring to your environment as a network? And then you will see that this environment will bring you things back. But when you see that the environment doesn't bring you anything back, the question is that, that the environment is wrong. It means that something is wrong. Is the way you are When you gather 1,000 European students the way you have been doing here, you should have had top politicians, top businessmen, top academics from different countries of Europe in there. And this should be not once a year. It should be four, five, six times a year that you have such kind of events with such time of high visibility. You can do it, because we did it. And we are not uh, genius or whatever. We just did it because it was possible. But again, I come back. Because we are bringing something to the rest of our society that was valuable. And what I said, and I will stop there, and I hope we're going to have an exchange, because this is a workshop, and more for me, a workshop is not me speaking for one hour and you listening. Uh, if we could do that, and you can do it, and my proposal yesterday was just to say, in my opinion, the best way for EG to do it now is to really focus on each side of the existing political entities in Europe. One side is the Euroland EU, the other side is the non-EU countries. To focus
focus on this specific target group, because they are target groups, politicians, issues, and so on, are very different, and to try to do the best and to combine the two, but in order to do the best, you have to focus on each of these two sides. If you try to make one side fits all, or one side fits two, in fact, it fits zero. And that is where we stand. Because if we are not standing there, if I was completely out of the topic, if I was taking fantasies of bullshit, you will not be there in this room now. And you are there. And they saw we are not contacting me to try to make that answer and others as well. So we know and you know that there is an issue, problem. So now I will really expect, I hope, that around these lines, for instance, if you think positively, constructively, how would you imagine keeping EG as one organization operating two different networks inside? One on your own use, the other on outside the Bivalent network, the Bivalent network. How would you imagine that? One organization, two legs. Any idea? Yes. Uh, I jump on you. <laughs> First of all, I think for us it's quite hard to imagine breaking our, uh, splitting our network into uh, different areas. And I really like uh, the other ideas uh, that you that you bring to us. Uh, about making more political impact, uh, about getting away from Brussels, uh, away from the institutes, etc. Uh, because only when you make an impact, <coughs> you are relevant. I agree on that. But I don't see the the uh, I don't see why it's absolutely necessary to split these parts of Europe up. Why can't we? get away from Brussels, uh, get low cost, uh, get an impact, why wouldn't uh, we make a bigger, in a big impact if we are still one organization without the split? Answer. Well, you're right, you're right. There is no direct connection, it's not necessarily connected, but still, there is a linkage. I'm happy to see that you, you agree with that this breaking out of the Brussels and stopping this Brussels office and all that and existing by yourself, but through the institutions. Um, I also think that another point which is very important I mentioned yesterday is the multilingual element. You need to be back to multilingual culture. Translation is really the language of Europe uh, and nothing else. Um, as a meantime, political, but when you say that, you make the if EG has to be more political, which political priority are you going to make? And I know a bit about Europe at large, not only in the EU and so on. The priority is for politics. In Russia, in Ukraine, or in Turkey today, are absolutely not the same as in Holland or Germany or France or Spain today. So by coming back to this really crucial element of being more political, it, it, it immediately puts you in, in, in face of a reality that there are at least two big different components in your network which have very, very different political priorities. Yes? Yeah. Um, I basically should talk about this. It was uh, our holy grail of ESO that we had Fractions, factions within the network, and um, I wanted to answer why it's a good idea to, to have a core group and, and an associate group. Um, I say, if you have the UK against you politically, they can speak darn well English, and we had that in lots of conferences, and it's just a real hurt. There was just always a core, it's a topic group, it was uh, around France and Germany and the German-speaking countries and they, 
it's just different political ideals. They were very open, very leftish, and and sometimes it worked. UK support sometimes it didn't, and you don't, you don't want to have them against you because they they are really well trained somehow, uh, youth politicians. And um, the second thing, yeah, they they. they if, if you go down into politics, you just have these factions. There's kind of a fact of life. And, and I guess in, in, in Brussels you'll find the same factions, kind of support groups that historically grew because it's the same people that go on in their political careers. Um, so I think it's, it's really a, it's, it's a better life if you sit in the same boat with people that, that, that where there's no knives in your back. Um, and I'm really talking about dirty political campaigns and difficult stuff. I mean, student politics on that level is, it's, it's very political, actually. So, and, and yeah, it's, it's just really, if, 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 it makes a lot of sense what you said. Yes, Linda. Thank you. 